Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Meadowlands, where the Giants are inside getting ready for a big game against the Washington Redskins. Before we preview it, I'm going to give you a little history lesson. One year ago, the Giants were coming off a big win in Dallas. They had ended a losing streak. They looked like they were taking control of the NFC East. They were about to lock everything up, and what did they do? They came home and got crushed by the Washington Redskins 23-10. to That's important to note this week because here they are coming off a big win over the Green Bay Packers, ended a losing streak. They look ready to lock up the NFC East, and the Washington Redskins are standing in their way. This is the kind of game where the Giants, who never play well with a cushion, often get in trouble. So I'm going to give you three keys for them to stay out of trouble this week and at least virtually lock up the NFC East. And the first key is an obvious one. They have to contain Robert Griffin III. If you saw the first game where the Giants barely beat the Redskins, it had everything to do with RG3 and his ability to escape pressure, escape the pocket, and make plays. You saw the big play, the fourth down one, where he made Jason Pierre-Paul look just silly and was still able to complete the pass. You saw the touchdown pass he had that gave the Redskins the lead at the end of the game. Those are the kind of things that they have to stop. This is a team, the Redskins, that can really run the ball with Alfred Moore. Morris and with RG3. They're going to gain their yards. They just have to stop RG3 from creating on the run. And to do that, the ends have to contain him. They have to stop him from making the plays when he's out of the pocket. I was going for him. Almost had him. You know, trying to get him to the sideline. He, he hit the brakes over. You know, broke me. So he's a good quarterback, man. You know, however fast you think he looks on tape or on highlights, He's much faster than that, and and their operation is much faster than that. You know, getting out of the huddle, getting on the ball, uh, you know, their 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 quick count, their hard count. They do they mix in a lot of different things to keep defenses off balance, uh, to gain an advantage. Watching him on film, uh, you know, you see a, a spectacular athlete going out there and making things happen for that team. Uh, whether it's running the ball, whether it's throwing the ball, um, you know, he's doing everything and, and then some. You know, in order to make make that offense successful. So, um, you know, that wasn't any surprises. You know, uh, he is his avatars. The second key for the Giants, get Hakeem Nix going. This has been a problem for their offense all year long because he hasn't been the same player since week two when he had that big 10-catch, 199-yard game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He hurt his knee in that game, and it's been pretty much downhill ever since. You saw signs in the Green Bay game that maybe he was getting a little closer to 100%. They need him going because when he's on that field, not only is he the best receiver they have, he takes a ton of pressure off of Victor Cruz and that gets Eli Manning into a rhythm when he has those two options to go to. That's a big reason why Eli Manning was in a slump for so long. He didn't really have a second option, and teams were taking away Victor Cruz. This has been a situation where, you know, I ain't really coming into this year. I ain't really get a chance to, you know, to work on and play ball as much as I would have liked in the offseason and going into training camp and then uh, battling the injuries throughout the season. But, you know, that's, that's just excuses. I ain't here to make an excuse. You know, I'm just a... Uh, he had to play ball and, you know, just keep on ground. The third thing the Giants have to do, run the football. You know the Redskins are going to run. They are a top-running team. The Giants aren't, and they've got a banged-up Ahmad Bradshaw, and they don't have Andre Brown. This could mean that David Wilson, the first-round rookie, finally will have a chance to show his explosiveness. That's something the fans have been waiting for all season long because you've seen it in burst. He's only had a few carries this season, but you've seen him be able to cut through a defense and get big gains. He probably won't be able to do that consistently. He needs to show a lot of other things, like he can move the chains little by little, that he can pass block, and most importantly, that he can hold on to the ball. If he can, Ahmad Bradshaw and David Wilson could be a very dynamic one-two punch, and that's what the Giants are going to need to hold off the Redskins to keep RG3 off the field, and it's really something they're going to need down the stretch as well. Well, I think we got to protect the football and, uh, you know, they do a good job on defense of, of getting turnovers. Um, you know, they do a good job getting pressure. So just got to, uh, you know, understand we got we to protect the ball uh, offensively and uh, be patient and hopefully, um, you know, we'll have, we'll have uh, the right calls at the right time and be able to hit some, some good, uh, some big plays. Those are the three keys for the Giants to win a game that they really should win to beat the Redskins, who might be their biggest challenger in the NFC East. If they do that, well, they're going to have a big lead with just four games to go and probably will end up winning the NFC East. To see how they do, make sure you check back on Monday night and Tuesday morning. Right here on the blue screen, we'll have the recap of all the action.